So, hello and welcome to ESL Vocabulary in Kitesley. And today it's a reading session uh, where we'll read about, well, basically what we discussed last week. Uh, now we've got two choices. It's up to you guys. Um, I can either share the document with you in Google Docs. I can share the link to the whole document with you if you prefer, or what we can do is um, I can cut and paste the text I want you to read. Which would you prefer? Google Documents. Google Docs? I... Okay. <laughs> the only thing yeah. is you'll have to stop when I tell you to. <laughs> okay, let me give you the link. Okay, I'll send it to you um, in local chat, in, in group chat I mean. That way, only people who are members of the group and anybody who's got very good eyesight will be able to share it. So, Google Doc for reading. What's the date today? Well, oh, I thank you. 11. Oh, <laughs> 11th, 12th. <laughs> I think it's the 12th. I think you're right, Monique. Okay, yep. so if you go to that <laughs> link, you should have two days before. Well, no, not not in the UK. It's Mother's Day in Germany and Europe, but of course Mother's Day was already, or Mothering Sunday has already taken place in the UK. You were one day behind, yeah. And in, and in America as well, yes. And South America by the sounds of it too. <laughs> Okay, let me know when you are in the document and I think um, I'll do my usual who was the first person who talked to me. So let's see, the last person was Sam Trump. You will be the first person to start reading. Um, just to remind you all, can you remember what we discussed last week uh, we um, examined the picture that's in front of us and we saw that uh, kids were had to work at that time in the Victorian times when uh, the is in industrializing began uh, we saw that the, we saw that uh, kids uh, had small hands so they could uh, do some work where a uh, uh, grown up wouldn't be able to to do this yep absolutely yeah, yeah. The, um, the as main part was, the, the main part was that we spoke about uh, child labor child labor well done yes now you said um how industrialization started it is that the case was there no child labor before sort of pre-industrial area era area before the sort of pre-industrial era was there no child labor yes there was of course child labor as well Yes, <laughs> it's not. A, it wasn't a Victorian phenomenon. It just became ridiculous in Victorian times, which we will look at today. And this this article was very kindly written for the British Library, and in the great tradition of British libraries, it is actually Creative Commons, so we can freely read it without anybody. So if anybody's watching this, uh, don't click on that breaking <laughs> copyright button. Do not do it. We're not breaking copyright. We have um, Creative Commons for this particular document. And if you look at the um, top of the document, you will find the link to the original. OK, of course, the um, original had a lot more stuff in it. I've kind of taken it and taken out the gump for the loads of images loads of pictures of dusty old books but it's worth a look if you're in if you're more interested in learning if you're interested in learning more okay some of the old books they have at the british library wow <laughs> okay so let me just check make sure nobody is lost in the um ether so to speak nope tough guy's not floating around looking for us good 
<laughs> Traum, whenever you're ready, if you could read the first two paragraphs, please, and the and the um, the title, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I am ready. Child labor by Emma Griffin. Industrialization led to a traumatic increase in child labor. In this article, Professor Emma Griffin explores the dangerous. Exo exhausting work undertaken by children in factories and mines, and the literary responses of writers including Charles Dickens and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Child labor was not an inven invention of the Industrial Revolution. Poor children have always started work as soon as their parents could find employment for them. But in much of, of pre-industrial Britain, there simply was not very much work available for children. This changed with industrialization. The new factories and mines were hungry for workers and required the ex 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 execution of simple tasks that could easily be performed by children. The result was a surge in child labor, presenting a new kind of problem that Victorian society had to tackle. Very good. Nicely read. I'm afraid that word came up. Nobody likes this word. <laughs> execution of. Yeah, the execution of. So we've got executor to execute and the execution of something, which just means to do something. It's just a posh word for to do something, okay? It's nothing to do with killing and um, sitting in it. Actually, Rima's chair looks awfully like an electric chair, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, maybe we should get an electric chair. <laughs> no, no, Lena. <laughs> so, execution. Try it, Traum. Execution. That's it. And then available. Avail I know you don't like that one either. Available. Available. Yeah, if something's available, it's there. So I'm available f to you during these sessions, if you like. I make myself available. <laughs> and then we've got, just wanted to confirm that dramatic, so dramatic, but of course we do say drama. So we have our drama session on Tuesdays and sometimes it's a bit dramatic. Okay. Do you want to just okay. try it again? Dramatic. Yeah, so it's like drum at the beginning, dramatic, okay? Dramatic, dramatic versus drama. Yeah, make sure you get the duh sound though, because when you're saying it, it's sounding a little bit like traumatic. Traumatic is something that causes you great distress and shock. It's a trauma, it's a traumatic experience. Dramatic, yeah, get that duh. Traumatic, traumatic, traumatic. 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 Is that better? Yeah, still sounding a little in there have a listen to the recording and listen to this dramatic traumatic dramatic traumatic okay and then practice okay um okay. what did you mean not available for the electric chair monique i'm not sure i'm getting worried about this monique thinking it's a good idea <laughs> now if you are thinking or just kicking the idea about the an electric chair no. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be a traumatic experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not a pleasant. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, as you as you know, I don't believe in uh, capital punishment. So um, I think we're safe. I think we're safe. So, okay, any questions first before we move on? A search is uh, similar as a storm? Yeah, um, okay, in this context, it just means um, an increase, a huge increase, okay? So you wouldn't say storm here. You can, during a storm, get a surge of water. So a uh, flood yeah, is caused by a surge of water coming in. But no, this, this just means a huge increase, okay? A surge in popularity, yeah, we saw that. We saw we saw what a surge in popularity looks like if we when we watched the American elections. Yeah, that was a surge in popularity for he who shall not be named. Okay, <laughs> just for my sanity's sake, <laughs> you know, president. Anyway, let's move on. Any is that okay, April? Is that clear? Uh, 
yes. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Good. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay, then April, if you could read the next two paragraphs, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, research has shown that the average age at, watch, at which children started work in early 19th century, oh, in early 19th century period. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't no, don't tell me. Okay, in early 19th century <laughs> Britain. In early 19th century Britain. Oh, okay. 19th century Britain. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, start 19th, again. <laughs> research has shown that the average age at which children started work in early 19th century Britain was 10 years old, but that this varied widely between regions. In industrial areas children started work on average at eight and a half oh, at eight and a half years old most of these young workers entered the factories as pieces standing at the spinning machi machines repairing breaks in the thread a few started as scavengers crawling beneath the machinery to clear it of dirt dust or anything else that might disturb the mechanism the mechanism in the mines children usually started by minding the trap doors picking out lumps of coal at the pit mouth or by carrying picks for the miners as work was often scarce in the country rural children tended to start work later typically at them at ten and a half years old. Their work consisted of birds scaring, sowing crops and driving horses at other livestock. Oh, Very bird good. scaring, so it is... Uh, yes. how, how do you say that? Uh, <laughs> Being a oh. scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, a scarecrow. But yeah, they, they, they'd be literally Poor employed children. to they'd go out in the fields and they would wave their arms about and run at the birds. Um, their job was to keep the birds off the crops. A <laughs> dream job. <laughs> ah, Traum, back then, not many, no. Um, the birth registry and the child registry, normally what you would find is they would be entered in the parish records because the church, of course, was the governing body for such things in those days. So beyond a certain point... Uh, if you're trying to trace your family history, you, you can't go to the births and marriages um, registration. You have to go to the parish records and then you can find out whether your great-great-granny was married or not. <laughs> Bit of a shock. If you're interested in such things, um, there are ancestry websites online and they will give you a lot of information about how you can trace your ancestry in the UK. Uh, and there's also a TV programme called Who Do You Think You Are? Which is, I don't know, I don't get it personally. Hubby loves it. Um, but you get famous people tracing their ancestry back. And so you can, again, learn a lot about how to find records of such things in the UK. Okay. In comparison with the other jobs, yeah, absolutely, Rima, running around the fields. But then you think about it, cold, wet, England... Not so much of a dream job. Great, great chance to catch um, your death of cold, actually. <laughs> OK, so very nicely read, April. Um, I just wanted to show the difference between machinery and mechanism, mechanical. Yeah. So you've got that mech, and but mush. Machinery. So it's more of a m than ma. OK, so try it, April. Machinery machinery yes very good but we say mathematics okay 
any questions okay. if you look at the picture in the document and also the one we looked at last week you've got the peace workers their job they, they look like they're fighting actually but their job was to uh, repair the threads and then you've got the poor um, scavenger underneath the machine obviously there to pull out the dirt that might block the mechanism okay and the machines had to keep running that was the main thing april yes the two jobs here as pieces and as scavengers the, uh, do they still exist do they do you still use that words those words no i tell you what we still have looms of course in any um uh, there's, we don't have the cotton mills we used to have. Uh, we don't have the garment industry we used to have. They've all been moved out to other countries, usually developing countries. Um, and you know, if you've read the newspapers, that they have their own problems with very similar things. Child labour, unsafe conditions, factories collapsing, that kind of thing. So nothing new in the world. It's all been done before. It's just being done somewhere else now. Um, but yes, they still have cotton. But I'll tell you what, if anything blocks the machine, you shut the machine down. You do not send children in to clear it. <laughs> not at risk of life. and li You'd end up in prison. <laughs> okay, it's against the Health and Safety Act. <laughs> so yes, those jobs, do they no longer exist. Okay. Thank goodness. Not for adults, not yeah. for children. Yeah, so uh, if uh, you ask me, what is a piecer? Yeah, they, they explained it here. Uh, maybe a children, a child that stands at the spinning machine repairing <laughs> bricks in the thread. But uh, it is, uh, it, is um, a uh, it is difficult to, to describe, actually. If you ask me, what is a piecer or what is a scavenger? Scavenger, is that just uh, somebody who cleans the dirt? Um, well, nowadays, um, it's not a job, but people do earn a living as scavengers. They go usually along the coast. They go looking for flotsam and jetsam. I know Reema's <laughs> going to write that down. I know he is. <laughs> flotsam <laughs> and jetsam. I'm going to type it up before I'm asked. Anything that's... Uh, <laughs> Anything, we were going to do this next uh, week, actually. Anything that's washed up on the beach, you get, or at rubbish dumps, you sometimes get scavengers. They're looking for anything that's of value in the rubbish. They're scavengers. It's not a job. It's not a job you would give somebody. They're just but at, because at the edges of society, if you like. Okay. Rima, yeah? Is it because of, is it because scavengers, scavengers are animals which are... Yes. Uh, Feed, uh, feed themselves with uh, dead dead animals. That's uh, right. I mean, that that's actually carrion. Um, uh, scavengers will feed themselves out of dustbins, <laughs> not just dead animals. Okay. So, for example, crows. Yeah. Uh, we call we have a crow called a carrion crow because it eats. You'll often see it hopping on the side of the roads looking for roadkill. Okay. And they're called carrion birds because they eat um, dead animals. Vultures as well. Yeah, vultures. They are scavengers as well. Okay. But we tend to, um, the, the dead meat is carrion. The scavenging, it could go in your dustbin, um, going after food that's been left behind in the fields after harvest. That's all scavenging. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's a special name given to scavengers. Um, but it's not just meat, it is anything you can get hold of, basically. Herbiv herbivores and carnivores can be scavengers. But they feed on things that other people and other creatures have left behind and human beings can become scavengers okay if times get tough 
many people, and even today in the world today, there are people who live by scavenging. Because it beats dead. being hungry. <laughs> yeah, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> I know Aladdin thinks it's real. It's not. <laughs> okay. So any, and if you notice here, they, they start talking about the mines as well, the mining industry. Yep, young kids were sent down the mines. Again, the benefit was their size. They could, they could fit into little cracks and nooks and crannies that an adult, a grown adult man couldn't fit into. So yes, in the mines as well. Now, what do you think was the reason that before industrialization it was difficult for children to find work what what would have made it difficult for a child to find work pre-industrialization searching in bins is scavenging yes april i know you like dumpster diving but <laughs> well virtual dumpster diving anyway <laughs> but that is scavenging absolutely hey tough guy you found us well done You've landed on Monique, but never mind. I'm sure she'll forgive you. Let me give you a chair. There you go. Sorry, we've run out of comfy chairs. <laughs> That's it, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't about the increase in jobs, Rima. It was literally their size was a, a deterrent. Uh, well, it was a detriment to them for being able to work because a lot of work was manual labor and it was heavy work and they just didn't have the strength to carry it out. A lot of farm work, you know, we call it labor for a reason a farm labourer because it's heavy work and it's the industrial revolution that suddenly you know they little nimble fingers and their stature their small size made them oh yeah they're good yeah we'll use some of them and they're cheap and they don't eat much <laughs> okay um yeah, tough guy you might want the you might want the link where we're sharing a document, so um, let me just send you the link, tough guy. Okay. Sorry, April, you were saying something? Uh, I want to say yeah, that the jobs for uh, children then, uh, maybe it was lighter, but uh, it doesn't mean, it didn't mean that uh, it was uh, less dangerous. Eh? Oh, no, absolutely not. And the, the, the biggest danger was you were working for people who really didn't... I mean, if you were working for your family, you'd presume most of the time your family would care whether you lived or died. But uh, when you're working, when they were working for other people, they were looked on like some kind of livestock, you know. And if you died there, it was an inconvenience more than a tragedy. It's not good. So, um, if there are no more questions, then Monique... If you would like to read, um, so if you'd like to read up to the next picture, please. Okay. From the life, and what about the other part? Is or from in the smaller, or I don't know. Um, in the smaller. In the smaller. Yeah, in the smaller. Yeah. yeah. I think. Okay. In the smaller towns, most boys were employed as errand boys or chimney sweeps. Though once again finding employers who wanted to hire a child could be a difficult task. The average age for starting work was 11 and a half years, 11 and a half years old. There was therefore considerable variety in the age at which children started work, with those in the industrial districts typically starting work the youngest. All children labored under the same disadvantages, though working for very low pay, performing work that was dirty and dangerous, and usually working long hours as well. And the last part as well? Yep, if you just introduce the book. Okay. 
The Life, of, uh, the Life and Adventures of Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy, was published in 1840. It depicted life for children in, the, in a Manchester, Manchester factory as horrific and unnatural. Yeah, okay, so Manchester was one of the industrial capitals of the world, okay? Uh, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, um, not so much London, but London, yes. But um, the further north you get, the more industrialization there seems to have been because of the access to raw materials, of course. And the railways changed things very much as well. So um, if you follow the railways, you can follow the Industrial Revolution. And of course, the Industrial Revolution didn't start in London. It actually started around Shropshire. If you go to Shropshire, you think, really? We go to Ironbridge. It's a fascinating trip. Uh, not many, I don't think many tourists go there really, um, apart from, you know, sort of visitors from the UK. But that's where it all began, uh, and the Iron Bridge works there. And um, yeah, you can you can see a lot of this and read about a lot of this in the museums there, and some of it's sort of like interactive stuff. Okay, okay. So um, just one little thing. Very nice. Very good pronunciation, actually. A little bit of intonation here. So, all children laboured under the same disadvantages, though. Working for very low pay, performing work that was dirty and dangerous, and usually working long hours as well. Do you want to try that again? I, I wasn't sure about that, though. So, I, I wasn't sure if it was, you know, at the beginning, I mean, the pause. Yeah, I'll be honest, I'm not sure yeah. about that first comma. I wouldn't bother with it, but this is from the British yeah. Library. I wouldn't dare change it. I'll change it, though, because I, I agree with you. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. She's a professor. So also, Come on, I can't argue with the professor. <laughs> but I wouldn't have that, <laughs> that. That first, though, is a bit... You can put it there, but it's a bit silly because it makes you think, well, which bit does that one belong to? And it belongs to the first part of the sentence, okay? Okay. So, should I write or not? Should I read something? Oh, yes, please do. Okay. <laughs> All children labored under the same disadvantages, though. I, I don't know. It's confusing. Ah, okay. Uh, let's, that's why I wanted you to read it. So, all children labored under the same disadvantages, though. Working for oh, very low yeah, pay. Okay. Before, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All children labored under the same disadvantages, though. Working for very low pay, performing work that's that was dirty and dangerous, and usually working long hours as well. Very good, okay. Now let's just play with it, because I think you're still a little bit confused about that though, and you could use it in the second part of the sentence, okay? Uh, but you'd have to change the ending, okay? Uh -huh. uh, now I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying this is true, I'm just giving you a, <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to say, Though, rather than all children laboured under the same disadvantages, though, or all children lab laboured under the same disadvantages, though working for very low pay, performing work that oh, was dirty and dangerous. No, but you can't. Yeah. You can't. Because you then need something at the in end. My brain is better. <laughs> in my brain, it's better that way, you know, because it's like a, all children labour under the same disadvantages, though working for very low pay. I don't know, for some reason. I don't know. It's, anyway, it's not the problem the though, I mean itself, but it's the next part. It's the you know? intonation, so, yeah, because yeah. you're used to hearing though uh -huh. as this sort of conjoining, this conjunction, and then explaining yeah. why it was other, yeah? Why wasn't it like uh -huh. that? So that's why I've put at the end, uh, had its advantages, which of course it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have to, if you're going to use it as a clause there, you'd have to say why. Why are you saying that? Because it's like but uh -huh. or however, yeah? But this one, it's not working like that. That first one, it's all children labored under the same disadvantages though. They were all working yeah. for very um, low pay. They okay. were all working, uh, performing work that was dirty and dangerous and they were all working long hours as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tricky one. <laughs> okay, so, and, and there you can see another extract from the book. Um, yeah, just raggedy children, badly fed, poorly, poorly fed, poorly treated, and um, yeah, just disgusting. Uh, in when you look at it using the eyes we have today, uh, looking at it with old eyes, 
people just saw children as a nuisance in a way. Um, you know, at least they're not out on in the streets pickpocketing. At least they're not robbing or, um, you know, doing disreputable things. Hard work never killed anybody was one of the tenets of um, the sort of Victorian age. Hard work never killed anybody, which of course is nonsense. <laughs> okay. Any questions? What is errand boys? Oh, we still have oh. them. Errand boys, yeah. Okay, have you ever run an errand for somebody? To run an errand. Run an errand. Yeah, to run, run an, errand. an errand. I used to run errands for my mother. Do you ever get your children to run errands, Trav? Ah, you go to the, to the shop, maybe. Yeah, that's it, yeah. To go to the bank for them, or maybe just to pay a bill for them. All of them are errands. Yep. <laughs> and you end up doing them the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. So it's the same. Running down the shop to... She can do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and sometimes as a child, you'd be, you know, oh, whilst you're there, buy some sweets or... You know, get yourself something whilst you're there. That was your payment. But in those days, errand boys, they would literally run errands. They, If they were quick and if they were lucky, they'd be tipped. They wouldn't get paid as such, but they'd get a tip from the person receiving the message or receiving the package. Yeah. Um, so they, And they were called errand boys. Okay. Do you ever get your children to run errands, Traum? Oh, Sometimes, sometimes yes, but not regularly. And do you pay them? <laughs> they ask me. Yes, they ask I'll me. I bet they do. <laughs> yes. No, no. I also don't don't get money for doing the house. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, don't confuse but, but house. Don't, have, don't confuse housework with errands. Housework is more of a chore. Okay, an errand is a specific kind of one-off thing. A bit of shopping, taking something to a neighbour, um, phoning somebody, that's more of an errand. There is there is a very slight difference. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, sometimes when I, I, I send them uh, go shopping, then I see yeah. you can buy something yeah. that you like. Yeah, the errands usually yeah. involve some kind of trip or travel or going from one place to another place whereas chores tend to be involved in you know doing the housework the dusting hoovering making your own bed that kind of thing that's a chore or a task housework okay but an errand is usually that's why we say to run an errand because it involves moving okay yeah i, I understand the difference but i just wanted to to say with it uh, they do it for for the family and so do I the house housework for the family, and they also could do maybe go shopping or uh, they collect uh, an important letter from the post office and so. Quite right. <laughs> <laughs> I approve of your parenting, <laughs> contributing to the general well-being of the family. I I agree. <laughs> Okay, so Rima, I think it's your turn. If there are no other questions, that Lynn, yeah, April, why go on. <laughs> if, it is, if it is so so cheap, children are uh, were cheap. Uh, they don't. They you can ask them for a lot of things, but uh, you have only have to pay a little bit. And why they sat here, though? Once again, finding employers who wanted to hire a child could be a difficult task. I was. Uh, I would think that uh, a lot of people were uh, wanted to have uh, children as uh, workers. But no? the problem was, people. A lot of people had a lot of children <laughs> back then. <laughs> I mean, literally. As this, remember, we're talking about poor children. We're not talking about the um, well-to-do. Okay, they were all right. But no, people who were poor <laughs> had children. They had to get them working and contributing to the to the income of the family bringing bringing in um the bread i think it is isn't it um yeah. bringing home bringing home the bacon yeah bringing home the bacon because quite often they wouldn't get money they get paid in um food or 
household items, that kind of thing. They'd get paid in kind, not cash. And also they might get fed whilst they were working for somebody else, which was less strain on the family. So if you knew your kids were being fed at work, even if it was only bread and gruel, at least you didn't have to feed them when they came home because there was no food in the house. Okay. Okay, Alex wants to join us. <laughs> Not sure if he's going to find this one particularly funny, but I'll invite him in. More chairs. More chairs, yes. <laughs> 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 only only if he accepts my invitation i'm not sure who he is yeah. so we'll see if he turns up or not okay so alex i don't know april just somebody called alex <laughs> so do you know what i mean um by that april during the industrial revolution uh, yes there was lots of job for children but remember they were in the cities in the industrializing cities in the countryside in the small towns there was still not enough work to go around, which is why so many people, um, because whilst the cities were being industrialized, so was the countryside. And so that's why so many people moved from the countryside and the smaller towns and villages into the cities, okay, looking for work. Okay. Or maybe uh, there are also enough adults so they don't w want to use children you mean yeah. yeah i mean yes absolutely um the jobs that were available were jobs that mostly would a fully grown man would be able to do efficiently and kids weren't suitable for those it was industrialization that pushed the mass uh, employment of children and orphans, oh, well, yeah, if you were an orphan, God help you. But even then, if even if you're, well, we'll read about that in a minute, actually. Even if your parents uh, were looking after you, there's only so much they could do to protect you because the power was with the people with the money and the factories and the, yeah. Tough times, very tough times. Not like you see on the telly. <laughs> Not like Downton Abbey. <laughs> Okay, so, um, no more questions. Rima, could you read the next uh, three paragraphs, please? Okay. <coughs> uh, in fact, the widespread employment of very young children in factories and mines marked a break with traditional practice and was something that uh, some contemporaries found distasteful. It triggered a series of parliamentary inquiries into the working conditions of children in mines and factories. Their reports famously shocked Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Charles Dickens, inspiring the cry of the children and a Christmas carol. Child workers appeared in several other Dickens novels, most memorably in the form of Oliver Oliver Twist, uh, with uh, his narrow escape as the as the apprentice of Mr. Gamfield, the chimney sweep, and in David Copperfield. David Copperfield was based loosely on Dickens, Dickens' own experiences of starting work at Warren's blacking factory at the age of 12, uh, following his father's, father's imprisonment 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 for debt uh, charles uh, kingsley's charles Kingsley, kingsley's water babies took up the plight of the nation's chimney sweeps and a uh, host more ephemeral novels such as francis trollope's the life and adventures of michael armstrong the factory boy and Ch charlotte elizabeth helen fleetwood also exposed the suffering suffering of child workers to the my, uh, middle class reader. Very good. Uh, child workers, not child worker, child workers, that them as, as a group, yeah? 
Okay, and triggered, not try, triggered, to trigger something, yeah? Uh -huh. Like the trigger of a gun, yeah? The trigger. Pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah okay. the trigger of a gun, that sets off the bullet. Leave the hammer going down on the bullet and the bullet leaving the gun and probably killing somebody. But you can also trigger a war with the wrong words. Uh, you can trigger a riot um, if you don't control a crowd of people. Yeah, you can to trigger something can be just to set something off. Okay, not here, Marco. <laughs> 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 so, any questions? I mean, there's some very famous books there. I think you've probably heard of a Christmas Carol, maybe David Copperfield, but the Water Babies. Yeah, I've read that. I haven't read. The Life and Adventures of Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy, and I haven't read Helen Fleetwood, um, but I have read The Cry of the Children and The Christmas Carol. Um, but, um, yeah, I haven't read those other three. So, But that literature actually pricked people's conscience, especially Oliver Twist. Remember, it wasn't a book to start with. I think I'm right in saying both... Ch um, both the Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist, they were in the newspapers. They were like a serialization of the story. So lots of people got to read them and they were little penny um, pamphlets that people bought to read. So whereas books were very expensive back then, people could still, the middle classes could afford a newspaper and they, oh, sorry, we've got thunder. If I suddenly go, Offline, you'll know why. <laughs> Did you hear that? Ah, I thought somebody was moving furniture, but no, it's definitely thunder. Okay. I think, Monique, you're definitely in the hot seat there. Um, let's see if we can move you so you don't get landed on every time. There you uh, go. No, 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 it's because <laughs> I, I sent her uh, a, a TP. Ah, so thank you. Like and on my... <laughs> that's why everybody's landing on your head <laughs> hello alex but, nice to see you yeah. so rima yes what were you saying for me it's look like uh that monique is sitting on your belly huh my dad's that's how i take a take a oh, screenshot please take okay, a screenshot okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, we yeah. need to see this. We need to see it. Oh my goodness! I have no idea. I think hilarious <laughs> pictures sometimes <laughs> uh, in world. <laughs> oh yeah, it can get really mad. It can get really mad. Um, I mean, let's all, let's face it. All of us have been stuck in a wall at some point, <laughs> <laughs> haven't we, April? <laughs> Going refresh cash, refresh cash. <laughs> Oh dear. Clear cash. Clear cash, that's the one. Clear clearing. Cash. <laughs> clearing. <laughs> uh that'll never forget that session. Okay, so any questions about those two paragraphs? Uh let me just share the link with Actually I don't understand uh, the the last sentence, Lynn. Mm -hmm. the, the, that Charlotte Elizabeth, is that the name of the uh, the title of the book, or what? Yes. <laughs> if I read, ah, okay, then is that alright? I'll 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 so just I'll let. On. Hang on a second. I'm I'm multitasking here. So, um, Charlotte Elizabeths. So, if you notice, there's a, an apostrophe s. That's the author, Helen Fleetwood. So, Charlotte Elizabeths, Helen Fleetwood. So, to me, reading it, although I haven't read the book, um, Helen Fleetwood is the name of a book. Okay. Ah. So the, okay. the, the so other is Charlotte, Charlotte Elizabeth. Elizabeth Toner wrote Helen Fleetwood in 1841 at the first social problem novel. Okay. You can read it. You can read it online. I've never heard of it. I've no idea what it's like, but the name of the book is Helen Fleetwood and the author is Charlotte Elizabeth Tonner, according to this, but anyhow, obviously people just say Tonners. Domestic feminism as a response to, I don't know, as a response to what? As a response to child and female employment. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> so she was obviously one of the reformers, yeah. Does that make sense? So if you see the apostrophe S, then you can pretty much guess that's the person doing or who owns the thing that comes next. So Charlotte Elizabeth's Helen Fleetwood also exposed the suffering of child workers to the middle class reader. They basically wrote about it and um, discussed it. OK. Oh, Alex, did you yes, want somewhere to sit? <laughs> Let me comma, get you a chair. Oh, there's commas, I know. <laughs> yeah, the comma makes me uh, confused, actually. If they just write Charlotte Elizabeth's Helen Fleetwood, then I understand uh, directly. But it's Charlotte Elizabeth's like Helen with Fleetwood. So it, uh, for me, this looks like, like that is uh, Helen Fleetwood is something else, not doesn't have any link with Charlotte Elizabeth. Well, I think the problem is if the comma wasn't there, we might think her full name is Charlotte Elizabeth Helen Fleetwood. It's a difficult one, yeah? So they're putting the comma there to say, okay, that's the name of the person, that's the name of the book. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Not, not really okay. <laughs> Okay, let me read it as if the um, as if it wasn't there. Bear, bear with me one second. Where's it gone? Okay. So Charlotte Elizabeth Helen Fleetwood also exposed the suffering of child workers. <laughs> Whereas if you put the comma there, it forces you to sort of stop. Charlotte Elizabeth's Helen Fleetwood also exposed the suffering of child workers. So he's got The Life and Adventures of Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy, and Charlotte Elizabeth's Helen Fleetwood. Okay, it's just there to say, stop, that's the end of that name. Okay, tough guy, are you ready to read? Are you able to read today? You're very quiet. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> If you could read the next uh, four paragraphs, because there's three of them are very short, okay? Okay. Uh, in, in addition, many of the period's most vocal and prolific commentators turned their attention to child workers. And of course, the situation of child workers entered the political heart of the nation when reformers such as John Sheldon and Lord Ashley, the seventh Earl of Shaftesbury, took up their cause in Parliament. John Leeds' illustration of the children's children ignorance and uh, want. John Leeds' illustration of the children ignorance and want, with in industrial chimneys in the background, from the first edition of A Christmas Carol, 1843, the campaign against children. Uh, child, uh, the campaign against child labor uh, culminated in two important pieces of legislation, the Factory Act 1833 and the Mines Act 1842. The Factory Act prohibited <clears throat> the, Factory Act prohibited the uh, employment of children younger than nine years of age and limited the hours, of, hours that children between nine and 13 could work. The Very Mines good. Act okay. raised yep. the starting... Yep. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank <clears throat> you. Okay, just be careful with that last word, hours. Hours. The hours. Yeah, you've got to get that long ow. Because when I heard it, I heard the arse act. <laughs> I was like, the what act? <laughs> the uh, the uh -huh. arse that children could, between 9 and 13 could work. I'm like, what? It's hours. Okay. I don't know. It might be I wasn't yeah, I paying enough attention, but it did sound terribly arsey. <laughs> Okay. okay. So actually, I pronounce it as hours, but I do not know what happened. I, I just said <laughs> came out of my mouth. So it's <laughs> not something I ever expected to hear. <laughs> actually, you know what happens in India? A lot of people, what they say, they do not say, they do not say hours. They say hours. Oh my goodness! I they, they mustn't go to yes. India. I wouldn't stop <laughs> laughing. <laughs> 
I'd be in a constant state and they wouldn't like it, would they? They'd think I was laughing at them. But uh, no, no. Yeah, try try to say ours when you're talking to Americans or British people then. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, fantastic. Okay, um, the first two are just names, but this guy is quite info quite famous. Uh, even today, he's got statues all over. Shaftesbury, not Shafters. It's a silent e. So Lord Shaftesbury. Okay. okay. Shaftesbury. Nah. And the next one, because it got the apostrophe s, you say leeches. So that apostrophe becomes like an uh leeches. Again, it's it's the apostrophe Leech. s is his um. Let me think, was it his act or his book? Yeah, his illustration, John Leach's illustration. And I don't know if you can remember, some of you, we did A Christmas Carol and we saw some of these illustrations uh, as Ebenezer Scrooge and the child, the two children, Ignorance and Want and the Ghost of Christmas Future, I think it was. His Christmas Carol, yes. Yeah, it's a fantastic uh, book. That was a chapter. Yeah. No, uh, actually, that was a chapter in my uh, English book when I was, I think, in the ninth standard, eighth standard. Yeah. When I read it. Yeah. It's, I mean, every yes. child in the UK just about used to read it. I don't think they do anymore. It's very sad. Very few children get to read complete books any longer. They read extracts and just to pass exams now. And it's such a shame. But I think I read it when I was very young. It really moved me as well. Uh, Tiny Tim. Oh. Every year in Second Life, uh, you can actually visit different Sims and they, they set up a Christmas carol. You know, you can go into the little Victorian houses. Uh, we, did, we did do a, a tour once in, in, a, in a very beautiful uh, representation or sort of model of a Christmas carol, uh, including the ghosts and uh, <laughs> the talking door knocker and everything. It was great. Okay, so the next one, prohibited, prohibited. If you prohibit something, you ban it. Okay. okay. Prohibited. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes in America, people talk about prohibition. Prohibition was when they banned all the. Um, prohibition was when they banned alcohol in America. During prohibition, it was prohibited. Okay, so prohibition, but prohibited. Are you comfortable there with April? <laughs> yes. I'm not sure if Alex can see April, I'm afraid. I have put a chair out for you, Alex. Uh, but as long as April doesn't mind, it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. It happens, <clears throat> guys, especially when you're new. <laughs> we all end up sitting on somebody's knee at some point. <laughs> Where is the picture, uh, Marco? Where is my picture? Just I think he sent it. I think, he's, I think uh, he I think he sent it. He's, he's, yeah, it. I'm just trying to find it. Oh, oh yep. Show. Okay. I've got I it, but I can't see it yet. Okay. Most affected. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Lynn, how to import? I, I uh, took a, a teeny snapshot tiny, from... teeny tiny snapshot. Your head, your head is here on the one side of the chair armchair how Could odd you see your head? yeah i'm not sitting there though marco i'm sitting in the big purple chair to yes, your but... right how bizarre <laughs> send it to me i want to see that okay okay i will send you. oh alex but has gone to uh, sit over <laughs> hey to well done alex uh, good job good oh, yeah, job share. share with me that's all okay okay share it but that that is not good picture. Okay. It's very small. I, I, yeah, it's very small. Because I, I, I took it here from the Kitely, but when I use a snipping tool, I don't know how to uh, import it from from my uh, hard drive. You don't oh. have to do that. You only have to do, to um, to set your preferences when you are going to. Yes, to yes. Use. But that no. picture is not good as this one when I when I use the. Uh, the snipping tool okay okay if but, you okay, if you use the snipping tool and you want to upload it into kitely okay it doesn't cost yeah. you anything it's not like second life just go to build upload image or control plus u and then you just it's just like choosing um and choosing any file okay but you need it needs to be a jpeg or i think you can do png 
and it shouldn't be too big. I think from cut and paste, it should be fine from a from a snippet one. But control and U should work. Control plus U. And then it will ask you to choose a, um, an image and then it just choose it. It uploads it and then share it. OK, anyway, let's move on I've because won. otherwise we'll we'll lose some time. Um, I'm not Alex is new, so I'm not sure if Alex has got voice. Or if, or if she can hear us, I don't know. <laughs> Alex, um, can you hear us? Did you want to speak or did you want to just listen today? You can hear us, good. Can you speak? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't heard you yet. So that would be a 222, which means we can't hear you. You have got a white dot, um, but I don't know how new you are to virtual worlds. Um, you do need to click on the little button to speak. Can you hear Yay! Me? Well done. Good job. Good job. Okay, we, we are about to finish. I mean, no, no insult to you. We're not running away because you're here, but we've got a session to run in, um, a jam session to run in 20 minutes. However, would you like to just say hi to everybody and just introduce yourself? I'm Lynn uh, from the network. I'm... Um... I'm Alex from France, and this is the first time for me. Uh, so I'd like to see how it works, uh, but uh, I think it's a, a, a nice, uh, a nice way to to speak uh, English and to practice. So I will join you uh, next time. Excellent, good stuff. Well, I'll send you um, a, a friend request. It's a little bit like anything, you know. You add friends. Um, and I'll send you a group invitation. Okay. Okay. All you have to do is just say yes. <laughs> just say yes. That way you'll see when I'm online, you can ask me for a teleport to join us. And you'll also get any group notifications if we're in another sim or if something's cancelled. It's always a good idea. I mean, obviously, if you know about the network, check the calendar. Uh, but if not... Um, you can check online by logging in and if I'm not around nobody else is around you can pretty much guess there's no session on okay <laughs> but if we're, if we're in contact you will see when I'm online okay thank you very much for you're welcome me. and if I'd, I'd like to just introduce you these these guys are um, if you know the network and you go to the forum and other sessions you'll meet these guys regularly so to my right we've got tough guy and then April who you um, sat on April's knee so you already know each other really <laughs> Then Monique is to the right of you. Uh, Traum is in the big comfy chair. And she's also Hermina on the forum. And Rima, who's also known as Marco. But you'll get to know these reprobates as time goes by. <laughs> OK. OK, guys, so we'll stop there. Uh, we'll continue reading next week and I'll have a little bit more. Um, information. Are you enjoying it? Is it interesting? Whom you are asking? Uh, everybody uh, here. I mean, it was, yeah. Oh, it was yes, interesting. Yes. I have to go, guys. So okay. So bye. Bye, Monique. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Monique. <laughs> See you. Okay. So we'll be in TGIF in uh, twenty minutes. Traum. I'm going to open it now. Okay. And I will send you the link. Uh, in a private message here okay uh, now I'm not sure how that will work but um, actually no I won't send it here because I'm I'll stop streaming that's a good idea isn't it okay so I'll stop streaming now <laughs> so, oh no it'll turn up on online okay so thanks for coming and I'll see you next week so Traum don't go anywhere <laughs>